Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, guys, and thank you for tuning in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Rich Walsh, we're taking your phone calls tonight. 412-575-2600 is the number. Get on the phone lines right now. Chris Muller over at 93.7 The Fan Cam will be joining me in a matter of moments. And there he is right now with maybe the best vest I've ever seen on him. I know he's worn it a couple times, but thanks for joining me tonight, Chris. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Steelers. I know there's some phone calls out there about Russell Wilson, but I want to start with the Pittsburgh Pirates. I know it's kind of off topic here, and I know we ended the show with the fact that Keller and Jones potentially could get dealt, uh, but you look at, I read something that was very disturbing today, and maybe I took it the wrong way, uh, but the fact that there's reports out there that they want to trim salary, and this is the reason why they're trading Keller and Jones, I, I, what is going on? Well, you wouldn't be trimming any salary by trading Jared Jones. You'd hopefully be trying to make a baseball trade. Uh, but yes, the idea that a Keller deal would free up money to do other things, uh, it's just small time. I have no other way to put it. It's small time. Uh, so you paid the guy, you gave him an extension. Uh, I would say a reasonable extension given his performance and given the market for starting pitching. A team-friendly deal still, uh, if you look at like what a third or fourth type starter would get uh, on the open market. And now we're already talking about making sure we're coming in under budget. Like, it's just, I don't know, Richie, you're disturbed by it. I'm just not surprised by it. I, I guess I wouldn't know why you'd be disturbed and not just kind of shrug your shoulders and say this is business as usual for this franchise because, let's be honest, this is business as usual for this franchise. Why would they think fans will want to come support them uh, if they continue to trim or save salary, even if they're going to sign an, an outfielder, uh, but you're trading away one of your best pitchers, maybe one of your most consistent pitchers uh, in Mitch Keller to do that. Uh, you're, you're not adding any. I, we were promised, and I remember interviewing Bob Nutting, I think it was back in 2018, I was at spring training, and he said, hey, when we are competitive, we will add and we will spend money. And that's basically what he told us. And he, he said that to me in an interview. But he's going back on his word. It's basically that they're lying, right? They're not spending the kind of money I would spend if I was a team that fancied itself a contender or if I had the golden ticket of the best pitcher in baseball on an entry-level contract. No. Uh, I always felt like those words, anytime uh, he would say anything like that, Bob Nutting or any of his lieutenants, his general manager, in this case Ben Charrington, they talked about an urgent need to win, I think, before this past year. Uh, I take all of that as lip service and as fundamentally uh, meaningless, Rich. And I say actions speak louder than words. And so far, these are their actions. An underwhelming trade that I think most people around baseball feel is a loss for the Pirates or an overpay or whatever you would want to call it. And now these rumors that multiple starting pitchers from last year are available and in the case of Jared Jones, very available. Uh, I just, actions speak louder than words. And I, I feel like I can just rest my case saying that. Look at their actions. Don't listen to what they say. I mean, maybe this, it's the highest uh, that you'll ever get back for Jared Jones. Maybe they, they don't think he's as good as maybe There's no case to outside. trade him. There, there, I agree. There's a, Richie, but... there's a plausible case. There's a plausible baseball case, if I'm being honest, for trading Mitch Keller. Like, you can squint, and if the return is right, you can, you can conceivably make that deal. Uh, the only plausible case for trading Jared Jones is if your internal evaluations of all your up-and-coming pitchers are, like, spectacular. If you think Oviedo is going to come back from injury and be, like, a total horse, which he's not because he's coming back from injury. Uh, but you have to think that Jared Jones is, like, a ticking time bomb because he's a hard thrower in a small frame and that he's going to eventually, like, tear his elbow up or be lost for a season. But... Other than that, this is just, it's just unserious behavior by the organization for these, these rumors to be floating out there uh, from baseball people that the Pirates are looking to shop potentially one or both of these guys, uh, and we don't really have a sense of exactly what their real plan is, if they would, you know, what they'd be looking for back, and all that you ever hear come up is something like payroll. So I would yeah. say it's fundamentally unserious behavior. I don't mind shopping anyone except for Paul Skeens. But I want to see them spend more money. I don't want to see the excuses, hey, we're trying to save money on these guys to be able to sign other guys. 
I mean, Bob Nutting is a billionaire. He has enough money. Spend the money now. You got a three year, four year window before you trade schemes away. Try to win. This is what you have. Um, so, all right. We'll talk about the Steelers coming up next. 412-575-2600. Back in a couple minutes. All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Gummer Walsh, joined by Chris Muller. This is our GMC Tweet of the Night. How about this one? Five straight. We are elite. The Pitt volleyball team winning against Oregon in five sets. This was close, uh, but the Panthers move on to play Kentucky at 5 o'clock on Saturday. I know I watched a little bit of it. I'm sure you're a big Pitt volleyball fan now. Ben Roethlisberger is a huge Pitt volleyball fan. Uh, everyone has Pitt volleyball fever right now. Do you know how you have arrived in Pittsburgh as a big-time sports entity, Richie? Do you want to know how you've arrived? If Ben Roethlisberger you get a, shows a up. Seer <laughs> wrong. You get a searing, Mulsey hot take here. Pitt's got to win the national title. Anything less, I think, they would probably tell you they would view as a failure. It's them and Nebraska as the two big favorites, and Pitt went in as the prohibitive favorite, and they had to sweat, and they had to fight, and they had to have Oregon make a couple of very bad, unforced errors in that fifth set. Uh, this was not a quintessential or a vintage pit performance. I am sure that, that to every woman on that team, they would tell you the same thing. They got to win it all. Yeah. Like, I'm holding them to a higher standard, frankly, than I am the Steelers or any other team in town. They're the best thing going. They got to win it all, or else anything less constitutes at least some sort of a disappointment. But good for them for uh, keeping their cool in a very tough spot, probably with some of that we're on our home court pressure and uh, finding a way to win. Uh, do you think they took Oregon a little lightly, um, looking past them a little bit to get to the, what, the third seed of Kentucky Wildcats? Uh, I think Oregon's block gave them trouble. I think Oregon, one of their hitters, uh, was given pit fits. And then uh, I forget which player on Oregon was serving, but you could tell her serves were having uh, pit kind of all over the place. But you know what Oregon doesn't have? Olivia Babcock who I think had 31 kills. Pitt was just feeding her for kills, and she was delivering. So you go to your stars in big moments, and she is there. Well, they've got a ton of stars. Who am yeah. I getting here? Uh, but she was the brightest one today, and they live to fight another day, and I think they're going to give a much better performance uh, in the Elite Eight. Malsey, hot take. Championship or bust for the Pitt volleyball team? Let's go out to Frank in Pasadena. How you doing, Frank? All right. How you guys doing tonight? Good. Thanks for calling. Uh, yeah, just on the Buccos, I mean, for me, this Hordes move, all this does, and say what you want about the player, maybe he pans out, but essentially all this is just showing is that any move that they're going to make for a position of need, whether it's first base, corner, outfield, it's, it's going to come down to, you know, financial flexibility that we've heard year in and year out from this regime, and it, it's not going to change. So, I mean, anyone that actually believes that they're going to go out and go and get a a proven commodity uh, in a position of need, quite frankly, they're just fooling themselves and the bottom line will. They're completely, here, here's, they're completely irrelevant in terms of spending market value dollars on a free agent, like a, like a legitimate mid to even upper tier, mid upper tier free agent. They are just not a player, like period, end of story. Uh, they are going to go around looking for one year deals on overlooked players if they do anything in free agency to augment, but I really don't get the sense that they want to. I get the sense that their attempts at improvement will come from trades like they made yesterday, or what, I guess, yeah, two nights ago, Richie, oh, sorry, uh, or them saying, and this is just the most half-baked part of it all, because, again, you have Paul Skeens, there should be urgency right bleeping now to win. They're going to say, well, we're looking for internal improvements. So basically, you can pin some of your hopes for this year's team on, among other things, keep Brian Hayes' back not giving out and him only playing like 75 games. Oh, and if he does play all those games, like 140 of them, him actually looking like a good offensive baseball player. I just, again, I come back to the word unserious because until they give me reason to say otherwise, that is the appearance they are giving off. An unserious franchise that has this golden goose and refuses to allow it to lay eggs and try to make something out of it. Yeah, they're not chopping at Nordstrom. They're not even chopping at Macy's. It's like they're going to, they're not even going to TJ Maxx or Marshall's. It's below that, you know, I, I, I don't Games. understand. I once found a New England Patriots 19-0 Super Bowl champions t-shirt. 
uh, or sweatshirt back in the day from the year that they went 18 and one and lost yeah. in the Super Bowl. That was that was a prized Mulsey possession for years. One of those bad boys off the rack at Gabe's. Uh, so I like the Spencer Horwich trade. I do, but he's not a proven commodity like we were just talking about. Um, why do you well, wait? Why do you like it? What do you well, like about they need a first it? What do you like about fit, him? And, and he has the potential to be an offensive threat, and I like that. But he's not a proven commodity. It was what I'm saying here. We only saw what he could do in Triple A. Uh, he only has what 97 games in the majors, so we don't know if he's a long-term fix at that position. That's why I like it. I mean, maybe I'm falling into this pirate's trap of liking. Hey, the potential there. Uh, but he does get on base. The most proven, the most proven player in, involved in that trade that went either way is Luis Ortiz. Like he is a an arm that can eat innings for you and do so usually in a pretty quality manner. I'm not going to make him out to be Sandy yeah. Koufax or Tom Seaver. But you have to but give up something to get something. He is a solid innings right? eater. They gave up more than they got, in you my think? opinion, because Horwitz. The best thing you can say about Horwitz is he is a destitute person's Joey Votto. Very good command of the strike zone. Minimal power for that position. Doesn't strike out a lot. Doesn't, you know, chase pitches or anything like that. He'll get on base at a very high clip. I think he was the best among all rookies. But he is a late bloomer with minimal bat speed, average exit velocity, and generally not that much raw power. Like, he's a, on a, on a good day, I think he's a gap hitting, doubles hitting, if you're lucky, 15 home runs first baseman. I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love to be sitting here seven months from now, Richie, in the middle of summer, and you're laughing at me because I got this one all wrong, and Spencer Horwitz is somehow an all-star, but I don't think I am wrong. I think they overpaid instead of actually going out and trying to sign somebody from the free agent class that's better, more proven, but uh-oh, going to cost you maybe $15 million a year to do it. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I, I'm just saying this is what the Pirates do. You're going to take a gamble at someone, and maybe you hit a home run with it, no pun intended. Uh, but they got more problems than just first base. They have to find an outfielder. Who knows what they're going to do at second base? Is it Triolo? Is it Nick Gonzalez? And like you brought up, Key Brian Hayes, you have a problem at third base. And is Joey Batch your guy catcher? I mean, they still have a ton of uh, positions to address right now. Uh, how many of the guys that you just mentioned, Joey Bart is your opening day catcher because he can actually hit a baseball from appearances last year. Uh, how many of those guys you just mentioned had an OPS under 600 last year for the Pirates? I think Tri Triola was like the worst offensive player in baseball uh, that was getting significant run. But don't worry, he got the gold glove as a huh. utility man. Yeah. Well, whew, thank goodness for that. That'll help the NL's second worst or worst on base percentage team and third worst team when it comes to hitting home runs last year. Yes, another year of Jared Triolo uh, hitting like a glorified, uh, <laughs> like good hitting pitcher, but at least he's got that gold utility glove. I'm sorry, you're catching me in a very cranky mood about this team because anybody that like, anybody that got real excited about this idea that they were gonna load up around Paul Skeens and build something like a real honest to God competitor in what is perennially one of the weakest divisions in all of baseball, doesn't look like they're gonna be getting that. It looks like they might've been sold a bill of goods that turns out not to be correct. And I don't know how as a fan, you can't be frustrated by that when you see what Paul Skeens is, what he's capable of, what that should do for a team, and what it so far hasn't done for the Pirates as far as giving them an impetus to actually perform on the free agent market. Yeah, totally agree. And I didn't even bring up pitching and middle relief or, or a potential closer. Let's go out to Gregory in Uptown. How you doing, Gregory? Good. How you doing tonight? Good, thanks for calling, Greg. It's nice talking to both of y'all. Thanks for calling. Uh, this is where you see where the Pittsburgh Steelers are strong. This type of team that you're going to play right now, uh, you're kind of weak there between the Philadelphia, Green Bay Packers, and the Detroit Lions. One of those three is going to win the Super Bowl. I don't think Kansas City is going to win it again. Those what about the Bills? Teams, I mean, I think the Bills have a shot. Kansas City potentially has a shot. The Ravens have a shot. And I'm not discounting the Steelers either. I mean, this is a critical stretch for the Steelers. Uh, they can't go 0-3. And, and I know we talked about it yesterday. Uh, out of these three games, this is the game that I expect them to lose more than the other two. It's the game they can afford to lose, too, because it's not a conference game. It's not a division game. It's just it's a measuring stick game. And Philly, I think, is the better version of what the Steelers want to be. Great at every level on defense. Uh, their draft picks tend to pan out. 
We know Tomlin values quarterback mobility. Hertz is a mobile guy. He's got 13 rushing touchdowns. They're a bruising running game behind an offensive line that controls the line of scrimmage against basically everybody. They cause havoc with their defensive line. I mean, it is, in many ways, they are a, a beat em up throwback football team. Uh, and I think it's going to be a stern test for the Steelers. I'd personally like to see this be one of those games where you see TJ Watt take over the game. Uh, it has not happened that often this year. I understand he's the betting favor for defensive player of the year, which feels almost like a make good, a mea culpa after last yeah. year. Uh, I'd like to see him take over a football game this year. Would you take Jalen Hurts or Russell Wilson? I mean, in the, I'm in the Russell Wilson camp out of the two quarterbacks that are playing in this game. Uh, I know that there's a ton of smoke around Jalen Hurts because A.J. Brown, they used to be buddies. Now they clearly aren't friends, and A.J. Brown's mad at him on the field. I'd still take Jalen Hurts. The running element there makes him very hard to defend. I know Russ is throwing a great moon ball, but yeah. Hurts can be, truly beat you with his arms or his legs. David, Finleyville, real quick. What's up, David? Yes, thank you for taking my call. If you would give uh, Russell a contract at the end of this year, what would you give him? You know what, uh, David, uh, this has been a hot topic here, and I've been thinking about it. Um, I'm thinking $25 million a year averages, I think, for three years. I think somewhere in the 75 to $85, 90000000 million range. Uh, if he continues to play really well and ends up close to 20 touchdown passes and keeps the interceptions pretty much where they are or only throws one or two more. I think you can make a case for like three and a hundred and the first two years of it are guaranteed and he's got something like, I don't know, what, however yeah. you'd roll it up there, 80 million guaranteed, but that's just market rate for a guy who would be playing at a borderline, you know, second team all pro or, you know, you know what I mean, like yeah. an upper echelon top eight kind of level, not second team all pro, but top eight to 10 quarterback kind of level. And that's how he's playing right now. All right, we got to take a break back in a couple minutes. <laughs> your prediction for Sunday Steelers game they haven't won in Philly since 1965 they don't have by far their most explosive and best skill position player on offense Philly's got some strife with their receivers and their quarterback but they do have the one of the best O lines in the league and right now the best running back in the league and they are strong at all levels I think they kind of strangle the Steelers here I'll say 21 to 10 Philadelphia gets the win. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close game until the end. Uh, I think the Eagles win it 29 to 20. I kind of feel the way you do a little bit. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. We see you next week right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Golf Fleet. We see you on KDK News right now.